Hey guys, how's it going? We're going to go ahead and get to it today. Listen, I got a little bit of a word for you all out there uh, from the Father for those of you that are suffering from anxiety. Okay, it seems to me that this is a token word uh, that, that I hear more and more often. Okay, I hear it also from a lot of sisters that um, they just have anxiety. Um, and, and I'm not belittling the fact that that's a real thing. I just think that we have to ask ourselves, where is that from? So we're going to try to figure that out today. And we're going to try to figure out what the Father wants us to know about that and how we can navigate uh, through uh, the anxieties that life brings at us every day. Um, so let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's open up with a word of prayer, okay? Yahuwah, we praise you and we thank you for today. We praise you and we thank you for this word that you've given us. We pray that you would open our, our ears, Father, and our hearts and our eyes to your truth, and that you would heal in us any anxiety that we have, Father. We, we all know that giants come, and, you know, as your people, we're going to face giants. And it's not your will, Father, uh, that we sit around being anxious or fearful over what giants may stand in the way. Let us all with let, let, let us all face these giants, Father, with the confidence and courage of David, Father, uh, having a sling and faith in you, Father. He ran uh, to face his adversaries. And our adversary that we're looking at, the giant that we're looking at today in the room, is anxiety. And it seems like more and more people seem to be suffering uh, from being defeated of this giant, uh, causing complacency in their spiritual walk and causing a fearful mindset, Father, that is not of you. So I pray that you would set people free today as we get into your word of truth, Father. We praise you and thank you in all things. Amen. In the name of Yahusha Hamashim. Okay. All right. It has been one of those days. So I've got a, a, a good word for us today. And I, I wanted to put this up actually a day ago and I didn't end up doing it. And then I kind of was looking at my notes here and the father just gave me a little bit more. And so we're going to dive into this. I do have, for those of you who are always like, oh, Rich is always in the Sefer um, scriptures, which I am. I have my Sefer here. Love it. Uh, but today we're also going to look into, um, this is a... Uh, uh, a KJV and Amplified side by side. And there's a couple of verses here I like in the Amplified. So we're kind of going to go there today. And I wanted to look at 1 Peter 5, 7. So we're going to go there. All right. And I am going there in the Amplified. And yeah, I have those marked. Okay. And that reads, and it says, casting the whole of your care, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all, on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully, okay? So what are we going to do with those anxieties that we have? Well, that's what we're going to find out. But here Peter's telling us we need to cast those on him. The him that he's talking about is Yahusha HaMashiach. Of course, the one that purchased you uh, with his own uh, blood, right? Okay, so now we're going to go from there. We're heading over to Philippians 4, uh, verse 6. Okay. I think I had that one. Bam. Okay, yep, had that one too. Okay. Now... We're also in the Amplified here because I like the Amplified um, has a tendency to use the word anxiety um, as one of the words that, that it translates in. And it says, uh, do not fret or have any anxiety. And this is it right here. Okay, It says, do not fret or have any anxiety about, you ready for this, sisters who are struggling with anxiety? Okay. Anything absolutely nothing. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything. Not the bills, not the roof over your head, not anything. 
okay? It says, but in every circumstance and in everything, okay? In every circumstance and everything. So by prayer and petition, with thankfulness, continue to make your wants known to Yahuwah. Now, obviously, I added the Yahuwah because in here it says uh, God, but... Um, by prayer and petition, definite requests, definite requests, okay? With thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to Yahuwah. So what can we have anxiety about? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, not anything. It's not Yah's will for you to have anxiety, okay? Um, so... And then the answer to that is prayer. So let's talk about prayer because in here, um, in scripture, there is an outline for prayer, okay? And we're gonna head over there, but I think I'm gonna switch back to my sepher now. We're going to Matthew chapter six, 34. And... Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to be able to find this. I know what I'm doing. I'm looking at it backwards. <laughs> I'm looking at my tabs backwards. Okay. All right. Are you still with me? I probably lost 90% of my audience. All right. The people that are still here are the ones that this message is meant for. Hats going to the back so you know we're digging in. All right. Uh, where are we at? That's right. I, maybe I haven't told you. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, down to 34. Yes. It says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient on the day, unto the day is the evil thereof. Okay. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. A lot of people with anxiety, they're not in the now. I'll say that again. A lot of people with anxiety are not in the now. Uh, if you talk to them, a lot of times they live in what if scenarios. And these scenarios are always bad. Okay. What if I'm rejected? Or what if I can't pay my bills? Or what if, you know, um, we get a nuclear disaster tomorrow? Or what if... You know, in, in, in a lot of times when I'm talking to people with anxiety, um, you got to be careful because they have a tendency they can also easily be offended, okay? Um, because you don't understand their anxiety, especially if you're coming from a mindset of what the Ruach HaKodesh would give you, which is that we're not supposed to be anxious about these things. We're not supposed to be fearful about them, okay? But you need to understand that some people are... Um, slaves to anxiety. They're slaves to fear, okay? And they need to be set free, all right? And one of the things that we have here in Matthew, okay, is in, in chapter nine, okay? Because we had just read, okay, that the cure to anxiety is prayer, okay? And then I, I, I just wanted to start out in 34 here, just to kind of show you, okay, if you're one of these people that are stuck in this, um, thinking about the future and being anxious over it or worried about the past, okay, um, more or less the future type stuff, um, it, it's right here, okay, uh, focus on the now. Okay, the now is where it's at. And what you do now is what matters because that is going to set you up for success in the future that you're, you're wasting, you're now being worried about. Does that make sense? Okay, maybe not. But um, let's go back to nine because this is gonna give us instructions on how to pray. It says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father who established uh, Yeshua, which is salvation in the heavens, exalted is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in the heavens. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay, so to address that, a lot of people are anxious over daily bread. And you're like, well, what are you talking about, Rich? I mean, I'm talking about daily bread represents sustenance, okay? It represents 
what you need to make it through the day, okay? Food, shelter, okay? This stuff falls into this category, okay? And so he's telling you, don't be anxious about it. Pray about it right here. Daily bread could also be a word, okay? Pray for his word to speak to you today, okay? So there's different aspects of this prayer. A lot of people have heard this referred to as the Lord's Prayer, but this is your solution to your anxiety, okay? Okay, and so it says, and forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who transgress against us. If you have unresolved transgressions, iniquities, sins, this type of thing, you're going to feel a sense of fear or guilt or shame because those things are out there, which is going to cause anxiety. Here's your recipe for for getting rid of that, okay? You have to ask for forgiveness. And that might mean eating some humble pie, okay? Uh, he used to say, chomping the crow, all right? And, and need to go apologize to some people. You might need to make some restitution to some people, okay? But then it says right here, uh, as we forgive those who transgress against us, how many people um, are harboring bitterness because of refusal to forgive other people. And this isn't necessary that they forgive you too, okay? There are people in my life that I was extremely close to. Um, they were family to me, okay? Um, who hold things against me, okay? Um, that they're choosing to hold, and yet I've chosen to forgive them. And that's not a testament to me. I'm just doing it because I can't live with the anxiety of that hanging over my head. Not only that, but it goes on in scriptures to say that if you're not willing to forgive somebody else, then the father won't forgive you. So this is all kind of spiritual common sense, but at the same time, it's basic things that we need to be reminded of. Are you suffering from anxiety? Is there somebody out there you need to forgive? Like you totally want to wring their neck? You need to forgive them, okay? You need to go to the Father and you need to forgive these people because you can't have that weight of anxiety or that fear of, oh, are these people going to get me back now? Like, that's not it. That's not how to live in peace and have shalom in your life. That's how to have anxiety. Are you one of those who says one thing and does another? So you're nice to people's faces and you go behind around them and you say other things behind their back and screw people over. That's going to <laughs> sowing seeds of fear and anxiety that you're going to harvest in your own life. Okay, that's how this works. You will reap what you sow. Okay, and so don't sow fear and anxiety, all right? Get rid of it, all right? So Yah will provide for you. That's what he says here, okay? And um, and lead us away from the evil inclination, but deliver us from the outer darkness. And isn't that, isn't that what it was about, okay? Um, you know, when Yahusha was asking his disciples to pray for him. He was also saying, pray that they wouldn't be tempted, right? And so when we're praying, we're, we're praying that we won't be tempted, okay? We're praying that we stay on that narrow way. And I've heard this described too, deliver us from outer darkness, but deliver us from the unclean spirits that would seek to, to destroy us and our families, okay? So, you know, you can be anxious, about the unknown, uh, the unknown spirits that are out there, you know, lurking around, which if you read the rest of, uh, if you go back to first Peter chapter five and you start reading eight, uh, chap, uh, verse eight and nine and maybe 10, it's going to talk about your adversary being a roaring lion walking around seeking who he can destroy. All right. He's looking for the weak links. So we pray against that, okay? And we, we pray believing, okay? And so it says, uh, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Um, oh, real quick here. Yeah, what I was talking about, forgiveness. <laughs> it's right here in 14. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Oh yeah, 15. So let's just go ahead and yep, yeah, just let's do this. But if you forgive not men their transgressions, 
neither will your father forgive you your transgressions. Friends, if you are holding a grudge, then that person is holding a part of you which can cause all kinds of anxiety. All right, if somebody has sought forgiveness from you and you won't forgive them, forgiveness is for you, okay? It really is, all right? You forgive them and you hand them over uh, to be in the Father's hands, okay? So another thing we can do here is we can backtrack just a little bit. Yeah. There we are. So it was uh, in verse 25. So we're still in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, okay? Uh, we're going to cover the bases again. So he's going to go in a little deeper here, okay? Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. There you go. Don't worry about the groceries, all right? You prayed about them. Don't worry about them. He's going to provide those for you, okay? Um, and what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor, let, or, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than food and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are they not much better than they? I'm sorry, are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if Elohim so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the other nations seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All right, back to 34. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So a lot of things that people experience anxiety over is how am I going to pay the bills? What am I going to clothe myself with? What he's saying is just do, okay, the things that he's asked you to do. Pray in accordance to the way he's asked you to pray. Pray believing, right? We know we need to do that. And He's going to give those things to you, okay? So this isn't things you need to be fearful and anxious about, okay? These are things we need to pray about, all things prayer and supplication, remember that? And so then one of the things that's going to help us do, yeah, we're going to Psalms chapter 4, verse 8, and we'll talk about one of the things that's going to help us do. It's also, in my opinion, it's a it's a giveaway. If you're doing this, then you're probably not suffering from much anxiety. Okay. And there's Proverbs and there's Psalms. Okay. And so we said we we're going to chapter four, right? Okay. Chapter four, verse eight. There we are. It says, lead me, O Yahuwah, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. And I'm going to look at that in the Amplified really quick. Let's see what it says in the Amplified. Four, okay. Four, eight, I think is what it said, right? Yes, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep for you. Lord alone, make me dwell in safety and confident trust. And that was the Amplified. In King James, it reads, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. And real quick back over here. I think I read the wrong one. Okay, so here it goes. Yeah. In the Sefer, it says that too. Which one did I? 
I believe I misread the one in the separate, but here we go. Okay, so 4, 8, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for you. Yahuwah, only make me dwell in safety. There is a little bit of difference there where the comma marks are at, okay? But the message is the same, okay? You're going to know, okay, that you're praying the right way and that you're believing the right way because you're going to have the peace and you're going to lie down and you're going to sleep at night. And I'm going to tell you right now that everybody that I've talked to that has dealt with anxiety has a problem getting to sleep, okay, because their mind is beating the crap out of them about whatever it is that they're anxious about, okay. They have a false view on reality. Okay, and so as you bring those things you're anxious about to Yahusha, okay, in prayer, okay, before Yahuwah, all right, those things are going to get sorted out, all right, and he's going to help you establish, all right, um, your mind, all right, and we're going to read about that here in uh, 2 Timothy here real quick. So it's 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, okay, and here's how it reads, for Elohim, has not given us the ruah of fear, of anxiety. A lot of translations will say anxiety there, okay? But of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's beautiful, right? I mean, how does it get any more beautiful than that? All right. So we understand, all right, that anxiety is not... A motivator or a force factor that the Ruach HaKodesh uses, right? Uh, fear, anxiousness, these, this isn't it. It says here that the Father's going to give us a sound mind, okay, which is going to, according to Psalms, give us peace and allow us to sleep. So we're going to want to look into renewing our mind, okay? Because we understand that the anxieties and the fear and all that stuff is not from Yahuwah. So let's go over to Romans 12, and we're going to look at verse 2, and that says, And be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. So when we're thinking about anxiety, we know we can prove scripturally that that's not a good thing of Elohim, okay? So we don't want to be anxious over what? Over anything, okay? So let's go real quick. We're going to finish up, all right, over here, and we're in Philippians chapter 4, okay? And we're looking at verse, ah, yeah, verse 6. We're back at it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unto Elohim. And real quick, I want to double check this. I'm not going to edit this or anything, but I want to double check this in the Amplified real quick. All right, so I said we're over here in Philippians. Okay, yes. Yes, that is where I started out, and I'm glad that we're in it. So it says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests with thanksgiving. So you can see how they're worded different, okay? In this one, it is, be careful for nothing, okay? And, and that's okay, but I think what we're looking at here is be anxious over nothing, okay? But everything by prayer and supplication, definite requests, it says, with thanksgiving. That's an attitude change. And that's something else you'll notice about anxious people. They often have a negative Nelly attitude, okay? Uh, so they need to be, uh, or, or rather, we that are struggling with anxiety should be thankful and be transformed by the renewing of our mind through prayer and supplication. And the key was in <clears throat> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, Yahuwah. <clears throat> your kingdom come, your will be done in and through us, in our lives as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, the unclean spirits that seek to destroy us, our testimony, and our families, and our walk before you. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, I pray these things, and in his faith, amen and amen. That's how we pray. That's how we get rid of anxiety. I just want to say, bless you guys. Thank you. If you like this type of encouraging words, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the bell icon so you know when I drop a new video. I try to drop a, a new word every three to five days. Uh, do me a favor. If you liked this video at all, hit the like button. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithms. And if you're one of those out there that disliked the video, hey, go ahead and hit the dislike button. It helps me all the same. Your blessings uh, will be my blessings. Your curses will also be my blessings, okay? So blessings to you and your family, and be of good cheer. Hallelujah.